And welcome back, everyone, to our February 2nd 5v5 Mixed Division Tournament. I am here, uh, I'm Combat1101, joined here by Earthkey. Once again, guys. And straight away, jumping into this fix a ban phase, already that anti ban coming out. Yeah, kind of just like. By that. Oh, Ooh, go ahead. Go on. Okay. Just like the Thresh ban, she's one of those champions that has a lot of CC and a lot of damage. And honestly, combat, I don't know about you, but I absolutely hate going against Annie's because once she hits level 6 and she's got that long range tippers, she's just an absolute beast in that bot lane. Yep, and actually. Yasuo now coming out. Yasuo, he did have that slight bug, but they said they fixed it. I'm still seeing mixed reports about it. But overall, he's just a really strong champion. If if you can get a team comp oriented around his knockups, and you can get his ultimate just go off on a full team, that's devastating damage coming out. Next bands coming out are the LeBlanc and that Leona. Leona, as we saw last game, just a, a huge menace and a huge terror. And LeBlanc kind of the same as Annie, just a lot of burst damage coming out of her. And she's kind of like a Kassadin and also, just in terms of her mobility. Yeah, and LeBlanc is one of those champions that has an amazing way of just juking people out. Because she can blink back as long as she's within that three second window. And can just be so annoying to deal with in that mid lane. On top of the fact that she's got incredible damage output. And yeah, we actually saw... Ooh... They, That's the next bands were that, yeah, the next bands were that Kale and that Vi, and actually already Dyrus OP they do pick up the cast in. Uh, oh, uh, I don't know what to say. The last time, actually, the last time we saw Kasten, he actually didn't do quite that well. But the time before that, we had a game with, I believe, around 36 kills, and more than half of them were on a cast and he went like 24 and 8 something ridiculous like that that's just the strength that Kasten brings to the table at the moment he's got really high base damage so he can afford to go something like a rod of ages so he's got damage he's fairly tanky and he can teleport around every eight seconds at level six so is that something you really want to leave open no but then again, Yasuo, Leona, Vi, these are also incredibly terrifying picks. So you do want to take them out of this situation. And it looks like they're hovering over Thresh at the moment on New York's Finest. Not really sure what this is going to mean for Dyrus OP. If that Thresh is taken, uh, in my opinion, there's this triangle of three best supports at the moment. That would be Annie, Leona, and Thresh. These are champions that can go in, deal damage, and lock people down as well. With Leona and Annie being banned out, that just leaves Thresh. And how is Dyrus OP going to match this? They could go something like Tarek, who's got that stun. He's got heals. He's got support. He's a very, very solid pick. He's a safe pick. They could also go something like Alistair, Sona, but if you were to go something like Sona, it runs a much riskier chance of getting wiped in that bot lane, just because Sona is so squishy now. And now they are going to pick up that, at least along with the Caitlyn. The Caitlyn, I think, was more of a response to the Thresh. Since Sivir was open yet again for Dark Sophie, but this time they choose to have that Caitlyn just for that little extra range and just stay out of hopefully Thresh's hooks. Uh, she does have that slight mobility uh, with her caliber net, 90 caliber net, so she should be able to dodge one or two Qs, but she's got to be careful. But now Wukong and that Ezreal being picked up. Wukong, not a commonly seen champion anymore, uh, just because he's not really tanky. He's more of just to go in and knock up everybody and have hopefully have his team follow up. But Ezreal, he's great. He has a ton of mobility, and not only that, his Mystic Shots do a ton of damage late game, if you can land them. Yeah, I gotta disagree with you, the combat, on that Wukong pick. Wukong's actually made a bit of a recovery in the jungle. You're seeing him more and more often, and while he doesn't have that CC early on, once he hits 6, he's got a fair amount, and he's always got damage, that's the thing. He's got that gap closer with the Nimbus Strike, and then following that up with the Crushing Blow as well. 
what he lacks in CC early on, he makes up for more than anything with that damage. So this could be potentially devastating for Dyrus OP if that Wukong gets rolling, if he gets out of control. However, Dyrus OP has an Elise, and we have seen Elise do wicked things today. Going into lanes, just walking out with kill after kill after kill. I'm hoping for New York's finest case, that they do not suffer the same fate that we've seen as Rhinos. And, wow, two terrors for the side of Dyrus OP. They do pick up the Nasus, and for their support, they'll pick up the Nami. That, yeah. that's it. That's going to be terrifying. Both, both. <laughs> Nasus is one of those champions who just kind of... We've talked about this before, actually, Combat, where he just kind of... He starts off weak... And then just like, they, as soon as he hits six, that's when he just gains a huge amount of power. And he kind of just, he th turns the tables on you, essentially. Lee Sin's going to be able to do what he can early on, get out that burst. But Nass is just going to be able to heal it up using that passive of his. So we'll have to see what exactly happens. Maybe with Wukong ganks, Nasus is going to fall. But if not, he's going to be a monster late game with so much health and so many stacks on that Q. And actually, New York City's finest to try and deal with that cast, and they do pick up the Gragas. That's actually that is a really good pickup that will be able to knock away Nasus late game along with the Casting. But Casting can jump right in, but Nasus has to walk back in. So great job by him. So they will be able, or he could actually isolate somebody, say uh, like the Caitlyn, if he were to land a great explosive cast, and then Caitlyn will be isolated in the team of five. Yeah, the only thing that doesn't really work with is the fact that it just doesn't really work that well with Wukong's ult. That's my only issue. However, if the Gragas ult is used for the burst and it's used well in conjunction with the Wukong ult, then it could be quite fine. The only thing I'm worried about combat is that Wukong's going to go in, he's going to ult, and then as soon as he does that, Gragas is going to throw his name in his explosive cast and everyone unfortunately flying away from Wukong and that's my biggest fear that should be New York City's biggest fear and maybe Dyrus OP's like biggest dream <laughs> that they are pushed out of this raging Wukong ulti. That will just take a lot of great team synergy from the Wukong and the Gragas to pair up their ultimates. Yeah, that's the thing. Like this, t I don't believe we've seen New York City's finest before. But the thing is, when you're with a team, when you've worked with people long enough, you know better than to do is something like that. You know how each other think. You can just work with each other quite well and avoid making silly mistakes like that. And now that the summoner spells have been revealed for everyone, that's a teleport on Cassidy. A bit strange in my opinion, but... If it works, it works. You don't really need that Ignite. You've got plenty of damage, and that TP just allows you to get around the map just a little bit quicker. He's just looking for a ton of aggression everywhere. Just like this Nasus, they're both running Teleport. So they could potentially split push top if they really wanted to, draw people up there, then teleport down to wherever they wanted and make it a 3v5 team fight. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what you got to avoid as New York's finest. And good ward placement will be able to save the day here. However, if that 3v5 does happen, if bot lane does get completely wiped, that's going to be a very easy dragon for Dire Soap. And that, because you see, there's no teleports on New York City's finest side. They don't have any way of really jumping across the map. And that's kind of going to be their downfall because it's going to leave Nasus to split push as the game gets farther on. You're going to have to deal with that on top of Caitlyn poking down your towers, on top of Elise throwing out poke. And even if you try to go in on that, if you try to Nimbus strike towards them, Nami is going to be able to stop you with a very, very well-timed Aqua Prism with a very, very well-timed Tidal Wave. So we'll see how things work out late game, but you got to watch out for that split pushing Nasus. Yeah, not only that, if they want to have the Nasus there as a tanky front line, they can even send the Kassadin, and since he has teleport, they can send the Kassadin in the split push. Obviously, it won't be as fast as Nasus, but that is still a terror. Yeah, it is something you're going to have to worry about, but I see this Kassadin going around and getting kills more than anything. I mean, 
NASA's is fantastic at doing both. Kasadin, I'd say just stick with the kills. I'd stick with blowing up Ezreal before he has a chance to do anything. I'd say stick with blowing up that Lee Sin if he goes pure damage. And that's if he a goes terror. tanking. Whoop, oh, my bad. No, that's a on. terror with the Kasadin and the NASA's both having the teleport. Both of them late game? You're going to have to at least send two people, at the very least, to deal with them both. Or else they could just easily face roll over whoever they send. So yeah. that is going to be devastating. Well, we'll just have to see what happens, Combat, because right now we are jumping right on in. And you know what? I've got to say, if New York City's finest plays this well... They should be able to take round one of this match. I've got confidence in them. Maybe it's because they've got Thresh and Gragas, two champions that I think are incredibly powerful at the moment. And while they do have to watch out for that Kassan and Nasus, I think they should be able to do quite well as long as they play it properly. They utilize nice ward coverage. And we should be able to see, and since this is the final match. I would assume there's going to be a great deal of fantastic board coverage, so I'm not worried about that. And now we are in the loading screen, and one of my favorite parts about the loading screen is the skin no, wars. No. <laughs> <laughs> For Dyrus OP, we do have the resistance, Caitlyn. Death, Blossom, Elise, Dread Knight, Nasus, along with Harbinger, Kassin. As a side for New York's finest, we only have a Frosted Ezreal and a Volcanic Wukong, and they're going to melt each other. The Volcanic Wukong is just going to melt the Ezreal and make him useless. Uh, you're a funny guy, come. <laughs> 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 and actually, what I want to... What I want to take a look at, actually, is that Caitlyn and Nami on the bot lane. I'm curious as to how they're going to play it out. Are they going to go for that more defensive look, or are they going to go and just try and push up as hard as they can? Because they've got the potential to do so. They definitely do. But if they push up too far, they're going to run into trouble with Wukong, and I don't think they want to do that. And since they are against a Thresh and an Ezreal, getting hooked by one death sentence is going to be, well, <laughs> for lack of a better word, death. So we'll see how things go for them in that bot lane. But it could actually be quite an interesting fight. Because I'm not sure who's actually going to come out on top. And if you look, New York City's finest, they're sitting here in this river bush, hoping for an evade, or they could do an invade themselves. Well, it looks like they're planning on something. Thresh is getting ready to go. He's already taken the death sense. And ooh! Oh! <laughs> Thought he had caught the least spider, but instead he only caught one of the little minions. Yeah, so just one little have babies. That's the thing with Elise. It's so hard to hit her with skill shots from behind when she's in that spider form because she's just got these little blockers for her. And they really did save her right there because she was in no position to really get out. She had just walked back into that bush after land. She would have been caught dead by that hook. Fortunately for her, the spiderlings were there and they did save her. And this game is just going to start off in a much safer fashion. So already, Kassin, um opting instead of helping his jungler complete uh, her red buff, he's going to go for that early aggression. But he missed 2 CS. Well, here's the thing with Kassin, you can't really provide too much support outside of that first Null Sphere. Like, that's the downside of being a melee champion. Like you can't really help over the wall like that aside from maybe one ability or so. So it's not a huge deal that he stayed in the mid lane without helping his jungler out. So not too surprising. Meanwhile up on top, Leeson already trying to put the pressure on. Nasus is taking a ton of damage from these little minions. He's gotta be careful. He's standing in the middle trying to auto attack Leeson. But he does hit that early level two first, but Leeson hitting it right after him. And now Leeson can go Ooh. extremely aggressive. And that will be the first one on the in, but he did use his flash and his knight, whereas Nasus only used his ghost. So that will be, that is a potential for a gank from the Elise if she does come up, because Nasus does have his teleport. Yeah, that's something you gotta be very, very careful of as Nasus. Level one 
level two up until about level nine when you first gotten a nice item it's really really bad for you to try and fight someone especially like Lee Sin who's got a lot of early game damage and the thing is choosing to start that Doran's Blade not sure that was really the smartest move you don't really want to go aggressive on Nasus and it may have just been smarter for him to go something like that Doran's Shield which is very very common in that top lane go for a more of a defensive start and now bot lane already, Caitlyn had a back. She got, she was just, she was too low, but she was able to only pick up a ward early and now almost hook, fresh, almost grabbing that hook onto the Caitlyn and that could have been really devastating. Oh, but Seth saying mid. Oh my gosh, wow. the red buff tick. Not enough to take Gragas down. That burn was not strong enough and he's gonna walk out of there. Nice and alive. Meanwhile, Elise is left incredibly low. Gonna have a risky time clearing that jungle now. But she does have the spiderlings, and she does have, if I remember correctly, it's her W ability. It gives her uh, extra attack speed along with slight health increase. Uh, quite sure what it's called, unfortunately. Not a huge. It's yeah, it's frenzy, and what it does is, along with that attack speed increase, it gives a huge amount of life steal. And any damage inflicted by her spiralings is also going to just heal her up. And Nami doing what she can to get that Ezreal low. And she tries, but not enough to kill him. This is starting to look like last game, though. Just a ton of aggression everywhere, and actually Wukong starting to go towards top lane, but Elise is right there with him. So this is looking like a potential 2v2 top lane, but the side of New York's finest will probably come out on top since Nasus is so low. When you gotta look at the creeps as well, they're pushing towards the tower. There's nothing really that Wukong can do at the moment. If Lee Sin goes to this dive, he might get the kill, but it's probably gonna cost him his life because Wither on top of Cocoon is gonna just be too much for him to escape from. I'm down bot lane though. There is a ton of aggressive going down. They're already pushing in that tower, trying to get it. It's already down to about half HP for the side of Dyrus OP. And Thresh is backing already. Or, my bad, Nami backed already. So she is going to go ahead and upgrade it to a medallion, the Nomad's medallion, just to get that increased gold generation and that increased gold per minion death. Yeah, it's still surprising to not see her run that Doran shield there. <laughs> and I hate to bring it up over and over and over again, but it's just at the moment it's so strong that we see it come out in almost every support. See it come out on Lulu, see it come out on Janna. And these are champions you don't really think about coming out on, but just provides such a safe option for that bot lane. And you pick up the Ancient Coin later, you pick up the Sidestone, as the game goes on. So you're still the support, but you just start off with an item that makes it much, much harder for you to die with. It makes it trade just better bot lane, but now both mid laners are Ooh. level six. Nice death, huh? In a sense. And now Nami, she has to be careful. She goes down to about uh, third HP, same with this Caitlyn, so they're gonna have to back off. And now this is a huge creep wave, but at least coming in from the side, if she lands a great cocoon, she does get the uh, repel up, and this may be a dead uh, or a dead thresh. Actually, oh. flashes the aqua vision and the cocoon. Great job by him. Yeah. Right, so now, Go oh, on. God. <laughs> a beautiful <laughs> flash by Thresh there, and oh, the dog just gets kicked in the face up on top, taken down once again by this Lee Sin, who's already got a TM at. He's farming so well, and that first blood cold is really paying off. Nasus with those cloth armors, trying to keep himself alive, but unfortunately, it's not really going to save him. Not yet. We're going to have to call somebody for animal abuse. Lee Sin just kicked <laughs> them in the face. Kicked the dog. It's not good. <laughs> No. Ah. Gotta call PETA. Ah, that's so much work though. No bad. Uh, Actually, yeah. Grog is going really aggressive. Oh, great flash by the Kassin to keep him safe. That is Ignite down on that Gragas. Yeah, but that's going to be a fair amount of tower damage that's going to come down as well. Even if Gragas doesn't smack the tower himself, and it looks like he will actually. But down bot lane, 
there was a great death sentence to get onto the Nami and then a play and Nami she got two mystic shots to the face and ended up going down so that is a kill for Ezreal down bot lane. Yeah, well, it's great that she's getting the extra gold and the regen from Nomad's Medallion. Unfortunately, it doesn't do a lot in terms of keeping her alive. And now mid lane, though, Grog is starting to outfarm this Kassin. Not very surprised by that. Kassin does have a, tro uh, time, a troubling time early game farming up under tower and such. But he is all he's only down about 16 CS, whereas top lane, though, Nas is a, he's still trying to go aggressive, trying to push this Lee Sin under his turret. Not quite sure if that's the smartest plan. No, it's definitely not. And picking up that second Doran's Blade is just so questionable. However, maybe he's got some plan with it. And he does have that cloth armor now. As the game goes on, we should be able to see him coming out on top. But now both junglers are in that top lane. We could see more kills coming down once again. And there's the cyclone. And actually, at least coming in a little late. But now Nas has popped his ultimate. He is already down. And this may be a dead uh, spider. But no, she just flashes away. And that is a flash down for Elise. In top lane, they're going to be able to easily push into the turret and maybe get a lot of pressure down. Definitely. This tower, while it might not fall, is going to take even more pressure. Nas is just unable to really keep it safe. But there's the teleport, and that's going to prevent the tower from falling, from taking too much damage. And in mid lane, Cassidy just getting destroyed by the fat man. And you know what? I'm not too surprised. With Gragas' clear, and with the ability to... Oh, uh, I thought he'd go aggressive, but unfortunately he did not have his ultimate on. Otherwise... Kassin, I'd say, would have just gotten melted. And wow, great job by Lee's top lane. The Nas is baiting in this Lee Sin for the longest time. He uh, Nas was standing in the middle of the creeps to take all the damage, but at least came top lane and they were able to shut down that Lee Sin. So that will be 432 gold going over to this Elise. So that's a nice bit of change. <laughs> Yeah, a nice bit of coin in the pocket, taking that killing spree out and giving it to that jungler. But down oh, on bot lane, though. Oh. Yeah, down on bot down. lane, like you're saying. Go on. There is a ton of aggressiveness going down, and that turret's down to about a third HP, so it will be falling pretty soon here. Yeah, that's what Caitlyn is so good at. Ooh, a very nice death sentence. But nobody's there to capitalize, so, they, so the Thresh can't really go in on it. Yeah, unfortunately, you're absolutely right. However, mid lane in that Gragas. He will be getting caught out here. Great explosive cast, if he can save Oh my oh. gosh. What an amazing wow. return. A nice cocoon. He is going down. Great job by the Elise, landing that cocoon. But that will be the kill going over to Elise, so... Not the most optimal situation. You do want that Kassin to get Snowbally, but at the same time, still really great. And that will allow Kassin some free farm potential. Yeah, that <laughs> that repel on to Gragas was absolutely fantastic. The reaction time was amazing. I didn't think that he'd be able to do that, but ooh, there's the tidal wave on bot. But actually, while this has happened, while the our uh, while Dire Soapy went aggressive down bot lane, uh, the side of Dire Soapy were able to pick up a dragon, and uh, Wukong does spot this out. But yeah, but unf to... unfortunately, he's not going to be able to do anything with it. He's a little too late to the party. Dire Soapy doing what they can to stay in this game, even though they're down a couple of kills at the moment. They're definitely not out of this game. And Wukong seems to enjoy the taste of spiders since he is a monkey as he just ate one of Elise's. And, and now... And up on top, Nasus, even though he's two levels underneath Lee Sin, actually stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with him with his ultimate up. And I didn't think that would actually happen, but... Ooh, a nice cocoon on bottom. And now this Caitlyn is here, they can go aggressive. Uh, the, she should see the Caitlyn ultimate. Oh, just barely. Oh my gosh. Ezreal just barely surviving with his barrier and actually Thresh picking up the kill onto Elise. 
so <laughs> not the greatest trade. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh my gosh. And actually, Nessus falls up on top. Oh, you can't go in without your ultimate, unfortunately. Nassin did try to teleport top lane, but did cancel it since we sent it. Uh, did safeguard away, and now he's just gonna be able to put even more pressure, and that will be teleport down on Cassin. But bot lane, Caitlyn is finally able to pick up this turret, so now bot lane will be able to roam a little bit. Yeah, even though Ezreal's gone two zero two in lane with the most farm, Caitlyn is just such a fantastic tower pusher that she was able to get the tower fairly quickly, despite the fact that he's so far and even though she's lost her own tower first which generally you doesn't happen i'd say she was able to recover from it quite quickly and she's gonna have to just abuse her range late game if she wants to stay on par with ezreal and oh gragas oh. might be in a tight spot gragas just taking a ton of damage great explosive cast to knock everybody away but this does bring her back in great tidal wave not quite being able to pick oh, it up. Actually, oh, Caitlyn getting way too aggressive, flashing into the turret. Wukong ultimate to knock her up, and Wukong will pick up the kill. Oh. And now that will be a kill onto Nami Thresh again, picking it up. And actually, the support is on a killing spree. <laughs> Three zero and two at the moment. Second most kills on his team, and actually in the game as well. Just one behind Lee Sin. Maybe this Thresh should be the one building the Bloodthirster. Wow, that, that'd be an interesting concept. ADC Thresh. Hey, I mean, he's got, what, 200% AD scaling with that passive on his fly. It could work. It's that all about kind of the burst. Yeah, it's... I and mean, I've seen it before, and while it's not the best thing in the world, mind you, it still it gives a huge amount of burst on that first hit. And actually, while this is all happening mid lane, Nasus was able to finally pick up a kill on it at least. Then, with like he did pop his ultimate, but now this may be the turning point where Nasus just gets that gets just that bit stronger and is able to out trade Lee Sin. Yeah, he's got the armor now. He's got the cooldowns from that Kindle Gem as well as a bit of health. And that's the thing with Nasus. You just need to keep on going. You just need to keep on farming that Q. Nasus is actually fairly far behind. That's, oh, actually, oh, I misread that. It's 171. While it could be higher at 16 minutes into the game, that's very, very good for the fact that he's died four times in lane and just bullied very, very hard. But now there Our is an engage with the Elise. She did get caught out slightly. She does have to flash away. Now Nasus may be going down. He has to pop his ultimate. And he will be going down to that Wukong. Wukong using his Nimbus Strike to get it, to pick up that kill. And now this may be a top lane turret going down. Yeah, I'd say so. Unfortunately, Dyrus OP not really reacting in time to take care of anything. Kassin is stuck mid trying to save that tower. And that's going to be an inner for the purple side now. New York's finest just doing what they can. However, Caitlyn and Nami are still pushing that bot lane. They need to recover and make up for the lost towers on their team. And they're not giving up. They're doing quite a fantastic job of it, too. But now the fat man is here. He does have that explosive, uh, or he doesn't have that explosive barrel, but great title wave by the Nami to knock out both the Ezreal and the fat man. And so they will be going out. And Kassin tried to teleport in, but couldn't quite. It was canceled by by somebody in mid lane. And now Nas is teleporting mid lane. They are looking to go aggressive. They've already picked up that kill onto the Wukong. Gragas is here in the background, and Nas just has to be careful. But great, great job by the Kassin to be able to poke down that Thresh. And actually, great hook by that Thresh, catching the Nasus. And. But nothing will come of it. Gragas, though, picking up that at least on the side. Yeah, just because you get that depth sense onto Nasus, it never means you're really going to be able to get anything. He's just way too tanky. And now, all that's left to defend this mid turret is the Nami and the Caitlyn. So, and they don't really have a lot of wave clear, and they will have to give this up. So that was now all, all outer turrets down for the side of Dyer's OP. Yeah. 
a nice valiant effort, but nothing is really going to be able to come from it. And let's see what comes out now, because right now NASA's is very, very far behind. He's got now, Nami getting caught out. She almost goes down that, but while this is happening, Purple Team does pick up the dragon. And oh, great job by the Caitlyn using that ultimate to pick up the Lee Zen. Thresh having to flash over the wall, but now Cassidy went too aggressive. He went into the whole team for in uh, New York's finest, and now Caitlyn did the same thing. She went over the wall with no way to escape, and now she goes down. So in the end, that will be a two for two trade. Yeah, this is exactly what Dire Sophie needs. Though. They need to go for these kinds of trades because otherwise they're just going to sit back. They're going to let New York's Finest just keep on taking stuff. And right now, that's not what you want to do. When you're behind, you don't want to stay behind. You need to take risks to boost yourself back ahead. And that's why Nasa is pushing top. That's why he's trying to get a bit more gold going and just doing what he can to get the team back on its feet. Because right now they're behind about 8,000 gold. This isn't... This isn't a game over yet. Even though Nasus is fairly behind, Kassin still okay, Elise still quite okay, and Kaylin, even though she's died three times, she's got that eye edge, she should be able to do a fair amount of damage in these team fights. So not too worried about her at the moment. Yeah, and something I want to point out is, is we were saying how far Nasus is behind. He is down almost 80 CS to this piece in. And that's not only to mention the kills and the assists, too. Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. But hold on, Lisa might be out of position here. But no, a beautiful safeguard to that ward. We'll get him out of there, along with that Dark Passage from Thresh. Just so many jumps on this guy. And at this point, Nasus just needs to worry about freezing this lane, not really pushing it. If I were him, I'd freeze this lane top lane and stack up his Q as much as he can. Yeah, but, but actually, running up, what is he doing? And actually, he may be able to win this trade. He does have all those Q stacks. And he, this Lee Sin's got to be careful, but there is the Thresh to help him. All the slows, oh. and actually great kick by Lee Sin. He kicked the... Nasus into two more of Thresh's walls. Yeah, and that's just a large amount of damage. After you break the first wall of Thresh's ultimate, it does decrease the rest of the damage by half, but that's still extra damage coming in, and that's not something you want to have happen. On top of the fact that Lee Sin's just building pure damage, that dragon kick is hitting incredibly hard at the moment. Yeah, and he went and he went from Ravenous Hydra directly into that last Whisper, so he is looking for that armor pin, but now he's got to be careful. Almost getting caught out by the three-man roaming squad. But now, Ooh. at the same time, Wukong going in really, really hard. He down to about 30 HP, oh. and everybody will back off, but... Oh, Ezreal ultimate, almost killing at Caitlyn, bringing her down to about 200 HP. Yeah, and that's just going to leave Elise and Kassin on this tower, but they should actually be able to hold it off. They've got some, enough burst, they've got the damage, and they're going in on this Gragas. Not too hard, though. Ezreal just a little too scary at the moment. 3 0 and 3. He's got that Bloodthirster, he's got the Sheen as well to just deal so much damage. And actually, again, Lee Sin is going really aggressive. Great kick by him to kick away the Kassin, but not sure that's the target you want to kick. Oh, oh Kassin flashing over the wall, and he may... Oh, he oh, does pay oh. for it with his life, and Lee still surviving. Great flash by him to get away from that Nasus, uh, from oh, the Nasus Spirit Fire. And Lee Sin barely surviving with about 10 HP, and he will heal up on that Wraith Camp. Oh, but Nasus just walking into four people. And now Lee Sin is back after healing up. Oh my gosh. Must have been a communication error there in combat for him to just walk into the enemy team like that with no one coming to back him up. And unfortunately, Nasus was just a little too far and didn't quite get that Spirit Fire. If he'd been able to get that Spirit Fire on Elisin, he would have gone down. But now Elisin is 5-3-5. and five. 
Yeah, that's the worst thing. When someone escapes right in front of your eyes with nothing but a tiny, tiny sliver of health. Oh, that's got to be painful, especially when you're so far behind and you're so desperate to get yourself back into this game. NASA's now almost 100 CS behind. Just not... this. It's not this dog's day, combat. Do we have to put him down? I think that's a bit too much. Okay. I don't I don't like putting down doggies. <laughs> anyway, we're seeing the zeal come out on Caitlyn. <laughs> Most likely going for that shift, giving her just a bit more pushing power. And that's Ed. what she's gonna be later on. Unfortunately the eye edge, the infinity edge, not really the best tower pushing tool. For that you want something more like bloodthirster, which just gives you higher AD because you're you're not really making the most Thresh. of that crit chance. Thresh just missed a point blank hook onto the Caitlyn. She basically walked into his face and he somehow still missed it. But that could have been really devastating as the Lee Sin was there along with Ezreal, and that could have been a dead Caitlyn. <sighs> Yeah, Caitlyn unfortunately just so squishy at this point. She's so far behind. Only one level behind Ezreal, but with those three deaths, she just doesn't have the strength to really stay on par with the rest of New York's finest. And now that is a mid lane turret going down. So all uh, outer and basically all inner, except for that bot lane inner turret down, and now New York's finest will be rotating onto this dragon. Yeah, getting just that bit more gold. And now, uh, I don't know, it's not looking very good for Dyrus OP. They are just... Not... <clears throat> oh, great. Lantern, by the, by the Thresh, to try and get onto that Caitlyn, not quite able to. And now both the Elise and the Nasus have a frozen heart. Not entirely sure why. Rather than stacking up items like that, I would have expected something like a Randuin's to come out. But this is fine. It just means no matter what, no matter who is up in that team fight, there's always going to be that debuff coming out onto that Ezra, onto that Wukong, what Lee Sin. They've got a very AD heavy team on New York's finest. However, that doesn't mean you can just ignore that Gragas. And Nasus playing it very smart, still going for that spirit, ooh, not that spirit, that spirit massage, which he's going to build out of that Kindle gem. And yeah, that is a great pickup just for the increased healing power he does have. So that will help him survive just that bit later late game because of 20%. So stack that along with his passive, and that is a ton of health regen. And then if you, if some Nasus is still will, they will end up building late game uh, one aggressive item such as a Bloodthirster or a Ravenous Hydra. So that'll just again increase the amount of life still he has. Yeah, another option that he has is he could go for something like a, a Warmogs, where he just gets even more health, and all the region that he gets from that Warmogs passive would just also be increased by that Spirit Massage. But this is all this is all speculation though. We don't know how long this game is going to go on because it looks like New York's finest is going to start going for Baron soon. They've got that pink ward set up already. They're getting everything else sorted out, and now Lee Sin has taken out Cassidy on top of that. But pings are going out for that mid tower rather than Baron. And great, that is a smart move since that is more valuable than a Baron. Mm -hmm. If they can get that inhibitor turret down along with an inhib, that is a lot more devastating. But actually, great Q by Lee Sin onto that Caitlyn. And oh, oh, Caitlyn just barely surviving with about 10 HP. But now Nami getting caught out by a Thresh Hook, and I don't even know where Nami went. Oh, just got this beer battered. Nami went on a little trip under the sea. Yeah. <laughs> just got that's right a nice death sense but getting on the nest is not really the one you want to go for it ow thrush taken down thrush baited his team it seems like since he does go down along with the lee sin and that is a kill for nasus oh and now ezra might also be in a bit of a precarious spot that castle does have full health but he's gonna back out Kong and gragas are still at full at the moment in both, and Wukong does still have its ultimate, so he still has that knockup to be able to keep him safe. And then not only that, Gragas' explosive cask should be coming up soon, so that could be very dangerous. And the side of uh, Dyrus OP has to be careful.
Yeah, they're not going to go back onto the Gragas' ult is back up once again. If he gets the ult onto that Caitlyn, he's almost in range to knock her back, but unfortunately, 90 caliber net is going to make sure she gets out of there alive. And all these wards around Baron Pit for the side of New York's finest is saying that they are wanting to do it. But Nami is going to come in and she will she will be able to spot out this pink ward since they are no longer self. So that will be it's that will be the pink ward going down. Yeah, not too big of a deal though. They can always buy more. However, I'm surprised New York Stars aren't really going for it. Instead, they're making these risky plays that aren't really sealing the deal. And if they were to just go and finish the Baron, take that out, and use that buff to kind of end the game, I think we'd see this game over very, very shortly. However, we see the clear by Thresh using that sweeping lens. They've taken out the site, but I would assume that Dyrus OP still knows that they're there. And now it looks like they're closing in on them. They're coming up from that mid lane, but they're going to get spotted out if they go either direction. They've got to move in. They've got to make a decision quick because right now it looks like New York's finest knows exactly what they want to do. And actually, Nami getting caught out by the explosive cast, and she somehow survived. Oh my gosh, she somehow still survives, even through the Ezreal and through the <laughs> and through the Gragas hole. Ezreal has got to be fuming at this point. It just seems like every time he uses his ult, it's just not enough by the tiniest little sliver. We saw earlier Kaylin walking away with about 50 HP. Nami doing the exact same thing just now. It's crazy. I would be so angry at that point. <laughs> and you know, I'm looking at the side of New York's finest. They do have a ton of AD. They do have a ton of aggression. But they have no real tank besides that Thresh. I mean, the only real tanky item on their carries is that Lee Sin's... Is the Lee Sin's Maw of Notorious, which is... Uh, which gives him that passive ADE, but at the same time, it's only really Magic Fist is getting out of that, and the only person that has it mainly is the Cassidy. And at this point, they're... Uh, again, New York's Finest is setting up for this Baron. They are going to steal away this blue buff. Actually, Lee Sin having to take the blue buff away. And this Cassin having to rip walk. And so now they are having to aggress on. And New York's Finest has to back off. They are nowhere They are nowhere close to being able to do this Baron. Both the Wukong and the Grogs are extremely low. But they're going to be pushing out this mid lane. And actually looking to rotate down onto this dragon. And at this point, uh, they are going to be picking up that dragon. So this will be the third dragon of the game, if I remember, going over onto the side of New York's finest. And they have increased this gold lead now to about 10,000, along with a four turret lead. And yeah, they are going to be I don't now. know what Tyrus are going to do now. The Baron is still up. That is a possible option for them, but. Do they have the strength to do it? I don't know. They've got the percent damage on Nasus's ult. They've got the percent damage on Elise as well. So if they were to go for it, they could potentially take it down very, very quickly. But they've got to have the opportunity to go for it. And unfortunately, they're just not catching out members of the, uh, New York's Finest at the moment. Yeah, and something New York's Finest has to actually be careful of is that Nasus. They can't let them continue farming like they are. They're going to have to stop it just in some way, shape, or form. Because Nasus, if he can just continuously farm, no matter how bad it, Nasus gets shut down, if he's allowed to free farm into late game, that will be really devastating. Yeah, it's sitting at around 450 extra damage at this point, and it's only going to get higher. And oh, Nami could get caught out if she's not careful. Thresh is there with the death sense. Oh, oh but again, it's missing. missing it. Still going to get time. the kill. Yeah, this time Nami not quite able to escape, and this will mean that NY and that New York's finest will be looking to set up for a Baron, or they could just be baiting. Yeah, so they will be doing the Baron. And yeah. at this point, at least she has to be careful. If she gets cut out by a death sense, then she could be going down too, but actually, mm -hmm. Thresh missing it. And Baron's down to about a third HP now, and actually only two of them are sticking on it, and they are going to leave it at a third HP to aggress. 
This Thresh extremely low. He will be going down, but now this Nasus is here. Nasus is this huge tank, but he is taking a ton of damage. And that will be the Ezreal going down. So now, so far, the Ezreal and the Thresh are going down. But Grog is getting a triple kill. Cassidy is barely surviving. And the only reason he did survive is because Leeson accidentally kicked him out. But now they will be able to aggress down this mid lane. Yeah, Leeson just overestimating his damage by a bit. Dragon's Rage has a hugely nice ratio on it. So I can understand why he thought he'd have enough damage. But unfortunately, a bit of a miscalculation. And something one of our viewers pointed out is that Leeson's farm is about 10 CS uh, every minute. Yeah, he's actually doing phenomenally. Up now, 150 creeps on Nasus. However, Wukong gonna get a race there. Bye bye, Wukong. You can't out yeah, you can't outrun he that casting. He went to the void to have a nice little <laughs> day. And now the side of Dire Sopi is looking to do the Baron, actually. Yeah, they're looking to take it. And this will, this could potentially bring them back into the game, but the Gragas is here. There's one person that could steal Baron, it is a Gragas, but Leeson is also here. And now they are aggressing onto the, oh, Gragas almost going down. And now Ezreal is low, but Baron's still down to about half HP. Elise and Nasus is doing a ton of damage to it. And Lee Sin trying to get in here. Not quite sure, but if he gets a steal, that would be amazing. Uh, Wukong is up now, so that would mean everybody would have it. And Gragas just has to be careful. Oh, but here's the aggression. Oh, Lee Sin getting the kill onto the cast. And again, Lee's just sticking it. A great job by the Elise grabbing the Baron still. But what is it going to cost them? She will be going down to that Thresh. And now, wow, that is a ton of damage on that Nasus. But now here comes Wukong, he is back in this fight. And Nasus is just stuck in between three people and he can't really decide what to do and he has nowhere to run. And so that will be Nasus going down to Lee Sin. So in the end, that's a four for three or four for two if I remember correctly, but there's nowhere really pushing for the side of New York's finest. So they can't really get a turret. They will be able to push down this mid lane. 10 seconds until Cassidy is up. But not quite sure if they can get that turret before then. Um, if they're quick, they should be able to. But it's gonna cost them a couple of members. Caitlyn will be up as well. She's got that ace in the hole to back up any damage that Kasten puts out. And now oh, Kasten getting a nice death sense. And Kasten oh. is getting deleted. Wukong, the death sentence ended the Wukong ultimate, taking him down, and that will be an inhibitor now for New York Finals, but they got to back off, everybody is up except for the cast and the Ness, but wow, great kick by the Lee Sin to disengage, and they will just back off, but actually, Caitlyn may have gone a little too aggressive, no, she does pick up the first kill onto the Thresh, and she could possibly be getting a second kill, at least though, she's got to be careful, she's down to about a 30 feet, and actually, great job by the Lee Sin, getting that Q onto him, and now they will be able to turn on this Nami. Uh, oh. Nami getting, oh, in the back lane though, Caitlyn is able to out trade the Ezreal. But now that now that Nami's down, that is a double kill. And Lee Sin, he may be going down to this Nasus, he does. Nasus' Q is just doing a ton of damage at this point. Doing about a third of HP onto this Gragas, and now Gragas may be going down. Oh, he might just get lucky here, though. He's burning his flash because he doesn't want to even risk it. However, this Nasus hasn't finished his Trinity Force just quite yet. So, not really going to have the move speed to catch up to that Gragas as long as he keeps on getting those body slams up. But this right here is what I was talking about. This Nasus, he is now farmed into the late game. He has, almost, he has about 477 stacks on his siphoning strike. That is a ton of stacks for Nasus. That is not something you want to happen. And he's just going to continue to farm it in base. It wouldn't be that devastating if we saw a real tank coming out on the side of New York's Finest. Right now, everyone is just building a lot of damage. The only one who's got even a shred who's of just building pure tank is Thresh, and honestly, he's not that tanky, because Lee Sin also having that Randuin's at the moment, and it's not enough to stop Nasus. Randuin's is a fantastic item for shutting down someone like 
an AD carry just because of the passive it gives you, just because of the armor and the extra health. But with Nasus, it, it doesn't do quite enough. I mean, great job by Elise. She does turn into a spider form so that one of her spiders gets hooked instead of herself by that thresh. And so she will be able to back off. But now they are doing what looked like a triple split push. Both Wukong and Gragas in mid lane, Elise in top with the Ezreal Thresh bot lane, so they're just looking to split up the side of uh, Dyrus OP. Yeah, they're just gonna avoid team fights from now on. They're starting to realize that mass is just too much to deal with. If they can get him off on his own, then he's fine. But they can't let him just run willy-nilly in the middle of a team fight. And actually, Leeson has to be careful here. He's not respecting, um, he's not respecting this Nasus power, and actually, he will have to safeguard away and Nas is continuously chasing onto this Lee Sin. Lee Sin's down to a little less than half HP and he will be able to safeguard away but that is a ton of damage coming out of the Nasus and they're gonna have to have somebody to deal with him at this point. Yeah but meanwhile on the bot lane doing what they can to get damage onto that tower but it's not working they're not doing it. Caitlyn's just got too much clear on her along with that Elise. Well, now, and now, or now, this Gragas and this Ezreal have to be careful. Kassadin can easily blow up either one of them. A great hook by this Thresh onto this Caitlyn. When she will be going down to the Ezreal, but now here comes Nasus coming in, and wow, Nasus oh, is already down gosh. to less than half HP. He's not as tanky as he thought he was, and that will be Nasus going down now to the Lee Sin. And Nami may play for it with her life too. In the background, though, Gragas picking up the kill onto the Kassadin, and now. The full side of New York's finest diving into the base of Dyrus OP. And uh oh, Lisa's stuck in between, but she looks like she's trying to get onto the Gragas. She will oh. pick up that kill. And while it looked like New York's finest were going to go for those Nexus turrets, the inhib unfortunately coming up at just the wrong time. And they're going to have to deal with that before they can take on any other towers. Kaylin is going to be up in 15 minutes, though. If they want to get something done, they've got to do it now. And it looks like they're just going to rotate bot lane to try and pick up this turret. And they should be able to do it. Uh-oh, but Elise going aggressive onto this, uh, onto this Lee Sin. Putting some nice damage down and making, the, making New York's finest back off. Yeah, unfortunately they weren't really able to gain too much off that. Yes, they got that mid hib and they dropped the outer turret on bot, the inner turret, oh, excuse me, on bot lane to a less than half HP, but unless they capitalize on it soon, it's just going to heal itself up slowly. And if it does, then all that work, all those kills, will be for naught. So the gold lead now has extended to about uh, 14,000 gold, and with Baron responding in about a minute, this is going to be something that New York Finest is going to want to set up for. Yeah, they've got to take it. Last time, Dyrus OP were able <laughs> to take the Baron from them with a very nice smite by Elise. And while no one on the team outside of Nami got the actual buff, they were still able to get the gold and more importantly, deny it from going out onto New York's finest. This time, they're gonna be looking for blood. They're gonna look to actually take that Baron and go with it from there. However, at the moment, Ezreal and Thresh more concentrate on getting that tower on bot down. Baron is going to be up within the next 10 seconds though, so if they can do this quickly and take the tower, then more power to them, but they've got to look to take Baron soon, because if not, Dyrus OP definitely will. But now there is four members down, along with the lead, or as the side of Dyrus OP, they do have four members down there, but they don't have their huge tank of Nasus, and actually great hook by the Thresh onto that Nami, but not quite being able to capitalize, he can't turn and dive with no minions. Yeah, they've got great wave clear the combat, so as long as they keep on pushing, they keep on going at it, they should be able to put some pressure on this tower at least. But now it looks like they're opting to go straight for the Baron, or at least bait out another fight. That seems to have been their strategy the whole time, because we've just seen so many Baron baits come out from this team, and they've all worked out very, very well so far. And they will be looking to just straight up do this Baron. And they're going to be able to, it's already down below half HP, and I don't think Dyrus OP are going to get there in time. They won't, and they got to be careful. 
but great job by this Nasus going in, taking up a ton of damage, but he's not able to pick up a kill, and he will be going down already. And now, wow, great hook by the Thresh to catch out that Galen to be able to kill her, and now this, now this, uh, Elise has to be careful. Flashing away with, along with her repel, but not quite sure she can still escape. No, it looks like she'll be quite fine, but that's gonna be three very huge members of Dire Soap completely out of this fight. This could potentially be the game here. They're going straight for those Nexus turrets. Yeah, and they are ready, and Lee Sin just doesn't even care. He is gonna be taking a ton of damage from both the turrets and the Elise. So he's gotta be careful. He doesn't quite go down, but it's already one Nexus turret down. They have 20 seconds still. Nashus is up. And I'm not quite sure that Elise and Nami can defend this. Oh, Next, and Elise Spider will be going down. down. That will be game. Great game by both the side of New York Finest and Dire SOP. In the end, though, New York Finest are able to pick up the win. Uh, ending the game at 37 to 18, along with a 20,000 gold lead. Yeah, unfortunately, just spiraling out of control at them. Oh my gosh, at the end, they were just so far ahead. I don't know what to say. While Darius OP had a valiant effort near the end, they were seeming to come back in these team fights because Nasus was just left alone to punish the team. Unfortunately, they did start going on to him and they just blew him up, abusing the fact that he just got crushed earlier on in the game and didn't really have the farm to make up for it. At the end, <laughs> Lee Sin still rocking more than 10 creeps per minute. 456, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> now the biggest I've ever seen in these tournaments. Yeah, it's huge. Not the biggest I've ever seen, but in these tournaments, by far, I've never seen anyone get that high. Anyway, this is only the first match of three. The first one going to New York's finest right here. However, they've got to win one more if they want to take the championship. So we will be right back after a short musical break. So stick around, guys. <laughs> 